God's name be glorified. Let me read a portion from the scripture and those of you who have your Bibles with you may kindly open to John's Gospel, chapter 2. John's Gospel, chapter 2. We read, And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. I am thankful to God for this privilege that he has granted me. Brother John P. Thomas will be speaking in Malayalam, so I will keep this presentation strictly to English. Thanks to assemblies from both sides for inviting me and thanks for Sneha's family for inviting me. Dr. James, who, uh, who is the master of ceremonies, is uh, Sneha's dad's younger brother. He has married my youngest sister, Dr. Lois. That's the link. Because some of you wanted to know the link. Today is a very special day. Sneha, I am seeing you after many years. What a privilege that I am seeing you in this manner. Worse, our families have known each other for a long time, so I consider it a great privilege. In fact, uh, I've married a girl from your neighborhood, so your family knows me well. It's a very special day for you. And uh, I enjoyed the way they entered the hall. There was a sweet little uh, child who was sprinkling rose petals all over, which shows that there is something not only special, but something very, very special today. And when there is a special occasion in our lives, we always like to celebrate it. And that also celebrate in the best possible way. Today I want to remind you about a celebration which definitely has a connection with family life. And that was a celebration by Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, the creator of the universe, he owns the cattle on a thousand hill. When he came to this world, the king of kings and lord of lords, everyone expected him to be born in palace of palace. And that's why the wise men came to the palace. But he was born in a stable. So when the king of kings had his special day, to be born in this world instead of a palace or palace of palaces he chose a stable for him that was special it was special to declare to humans that i have come as one among you that was the first important occasion on the li in the life of lord jesus christ and then there was another special occasion in the life of Jesus Christ, which we find in verse 11. Same book, chapter 11. This was the second most important event in the life of Lord Jesus. And it says, in the beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee. This beginning. That means when he came to this world, he announced, my children, I am for you. And when he started his miracles, which continued for three and a half years of his ministry, he announced, my dear children who are going to be wedded today, I am going to start my, the first of my miracles with a wedding because for God, creation, incarnation and wedding 
is very important that's why even the relation of church with lord jesus christ is uh, mentioned as bride groom and wedding so this morning i wish to remind sneha and boas that lord jesus could have and humanly speaking he should have started his first miracle in some very important place see they are going to be wedded today the families or the family hired a, an auditorium very important persons were invited and there was a even as they entered the hall we all stood up and celebrated it so when king of kings and lord of lords came to this world and when he started his miracles which were going to continue for three and a half years he humanly speaking he should have gathered a crowd and in front of that crowd should he have performed his first miracle we all know about the release of books whenever writers release their books generally they gather a crowd there will be vips on the stage and even that little petty book is released with so much fanfare that being so we need to ask why the king of kings the lord of lords why he did not celebrate it that way why he did not present it in front of say 5000 people whom he fed and remember when he fed 5000 people it, it was 5000 men so there were approximately 15 to 20000 people he could have performed this first miracle there no he chose a wedding because the scripture makes it very clear that from creation up to the end of the present mankind when we enter before we enter new heavens and new earth weddings have a special place and therefore my dear children let me remind you you should never forget that this was a special day even the lord started his first first miracle from a wedding and therefore each and every day you have to look back to that special day renew your ties renew your vows and also ask the lord lord you yourself demonstrated that a wedding is such an important event that the lord of lord and creator of the universe started demonstrating demonstrating his omnipotence his all powerful control of of the universe on a wedding day there are several things that we read in this verse the story rather let me use the word the history of the wedding at cana is known to all of us we know how there was a shortage of wine as indians we can't understand the importance of wine or the importance of grape juice because we don't use it in our weddings we usually provide tea or soft drinks and these days bottled water and suppose as everything progresses somebody says please give me a little more water and everybody cuts a sorry figure saying are you yo the drinking water is over what a catastrophe it would be in the same way the most common drink at that time was grape juice and in a wealthy family like that of lazars a uh, uh, wealthy la family like this family in kena not having wine or not having i'm using wine in the uh, in the as the equivalent of grape juice not having it was a very very serious crisis the mother of lord immediately understood it please remember 
she was perhaps a relative perhaps not nothing is mentioned or nothing immediately comes to my mind she perceived the problem she knew where the solution is she went to lord jesus and said only made only one statement they do not have grape juice that's all the question is what important or what significance does it have for a wedded life lot of it my children she knew that the lord is going definitely going to do something she went to the servant said whatever he says do it and lord, we know the rest of the history how lord asked them to fill the pots they filled the pots and he said go take and serve they served and lo the master of ceremonies was stunned he could not maintain his balance he ran to the groom's father and said hey listen we have a common practice usually they give better quality grape juice in the beginning and when everyone is thoroughly fed up with that they give the cheapest quality that's a com that was a common practice and man you have kept the best till now it's amazing this has several lessons for us lord jesus could easily have created grape juice in all those vessels but no he used the cheapest drink that is available in this entire world water even today it is the cheapest commodity that we buy and even what we pay is because it has to be purified those who live beside river sides they don't pay anything so lord jesus picked up the cheapest commodity that was available and transformed it into a classic soft drink of his time so much so that the master of ceremonies who are who was supposed to maintain his balance he lost it he jumped up oh what is this he forgot his job and he ran to the groom's father my dear children this is a great lesson for our marriage lives the lord always starts with ordinary people according to the world we might be highly educated you might be highly educated i might be highly educated but let us be honest in front of the lord we are nothing lord picks up such things and transforms it into something that is beyond belief and the fact that lord did it in a wedding shows that god has brought both of you together to pick you up and transform both of you into something seeing which people would be amazed and people ought to be amazed that means if you have both if both of you have heard, heard your call properly for marriage and i know you have because families have been praying for a long time and i know as born again children both of you also have been praying for it since you have heard the lord's call this morning the first thing from this incident i want to remind you is this the lord has picked you up and the lord wants to transform you and the lord wants to transform you into a couple which would amaze people so much that they might even forget their composer and start asking you start running to you and asking you hey aren't you uh, sneha aren't you boaz i remember uh, what is this what is this new transformation in your lives that's the kind of transformation the lord wants to bring into your lives 
and let me remind you it's not a sim it's not just a couple whom the lord called together to perform this miracle the entire family from both sides and also friends were involved because when the lord transforms he also touches the lives of people and therefore the lord has called both of you for a transformation not only in your lives but also into in the lives of both of your families and also the extended families and among your friends through your lives i am sure that all of you know about the formation of pearls how a grain of sand over time becomes a precious pearl in the same way the lord who transformed plain water into the most precious commodity at that time he wants to transform and therefore to my dear children my main message to you from the scripture today is many of us think that wedding is an event yes wedding is an event but marriage is not an event marriage is a process which starts on the day of wedding and does it continue till the end of your life no it continues beyond that because the lord has kept you here to reproduce and transform this blessing to your children and grandchildren and perhaps if possible to your great grandchildren so that transformation is not an event it is actually a, an event which has to culminate into a process which has to go through all your lives and that is what i want to remind both of you children and the parents and family members who are sitting here and listening to the scripture i want to remind you my dear friends their wedding and among us those of us who are already wedded and those of you who are waiting for your wedding it has to be a transformative process it is a transformative process and only a person who understands transformation can understand this and therefore there might be some in this audience who might not have experienced this transformation in your lives listening life to me there might be some who have not experienced this transformation in your lives and therefore i want to remind all of you that marriage is definitely an occasion for or wedding is an occasion for lifelong transformation but when the lord took ordinary commodity like water and transformed it into the best quality of wine that indicates that each person who is in this world the lord wants to transform him to something that is most precious the bible says that god wants to transform each of us till we are conformed unto the image of christ what does that mean please remember if you open a general knowledge textbook written by secular people they will ask questions like who is the father of india and everybody knows mahatma gandhi is the father of india one of the questions which consistently occurs in general knowledge textbooks is who is the light of the world secular people the answer without exception is lord jesus christ why is he known as the light of the world because he came to this world to fill our dark lives lives which are full of darkness into to fill it with light so if there is anyone here who has not understood that message in less than five sentences let me make that message of transformation also clear god created mankind to bless mankind mankind by his its own violation became sinners and alienated from god god promised a savior who came in the form of lord jesus christ and offered his sacrifice on the cross for us and invites us any one of us who has not experienced this transformation when we go to the cross and accept lord jesus as our savior 
we are transformed and that's the most important transformation of your life's my life fifth point when i was a child this message was given to me i immediately accepted the lord jesus as my personal savior and since then i live with a special joy special hope that one day i will go and be with lord jesus forever these five sentences are the most important message in this entire habited universe if there is anyone who has not experienced this transformation through the sacrifice of lord jesus i would urge you after this wedding is over many many of us are more than happy to set apart our time and explain it to you i would be happy dr james would be happy and hey don't disturb them today but once their special day is over even sneha and boz would be happy to explain it to you because that is what actually ultimately unites us so my dear brothers and sisters let us turn back to the scripture once again to summarize all what i presented in front of you god takes picks up the ordinary and transforms it to the extraordinary god picks up a young man a young woman joins them on the day of their wedding blesses them and then there is a transformation throughout their lives transformation enough to shock others to surprise others to make them ask hey what is so special in your lives we are also a married couple but we are unable to experience in our lives what you experience that's when you share god's transforming power in your lives with them so my dear children seek that transformation seek that transformation and please remember lord jesus could have chosen any occasion in this world but he chose a wedding to manifest his glory and today on your special day he has chosen both of you to manifest his glory through your lives be aware of this every day number 2 family members on both sides in india and eastern countries marriage is not an isolated event marriage is the bringing of two families together and therefore both of the families have to encourage them in their transformation and you have to bless your families through your transformation three if there is anyone here who has not experienced the transformation known as salvation through lord jesus christ i plead with you this is a matter of your destiny and therefore don't ignore it lord jesus gave his best for you you need to accept it if you don't understand it there are many of us here who are willing to explain all these things to you may the lord bless all of you